Welcome back to Patrick Show, episode nine, season two. And here we're in Greensboro, North Carolina, with the special guest being Will Bradley and sports performance. With that being said, let's get to the walk and talk. Peace. Welcome back to the Patrick Show. I'm here with Will Bradley, uh, sports performance coach. First question for you is, uh, what's your fastest 40 time recorded? 447, man. I had to, I had to work hard for that, yeah. man. I didn't know how to run. I had to teach myself how to yeah. make that happen. Yeah, that's awesome. That's speed for you right there. And last question for you is specifically for football athletes, what is your go-to drills? Well, football athletes come to us to get fast for their 40 yard dash for the most part. I'm gonna just say a 20 yard dash, right? Cause we gotta work on our start. Yeah. If the start's legit, it gives them a good chance to finish fast. Yeah, it's all about the start and then the finish. With that being said, let's get to the pod. Let's Peace. Get all right, welcome back to the Patrick Show. This is episode nine, season two. And here with me is the big time special guest, Will Bradley, a sports performance coach. We're out here in Greensboro, North Carolina. With that being said, I'm gonna give you a floor here to share with us. Tell us a little bit about your story and you know where you graduate and how you where you are today. Okay. So Will Bradley, owner of Will Bradley Sports Performance. Mm -hmm. So I guess you could break this up into two different parts, right? So we go pre-professional and professional. Okay. So pre-professional, I went to high school here locally at Page High School. Mm -hmm. I was a football and track athlete. Yeah. From there, um, I went up to Temple University and I played Power 5 football. We called it BCS, but it's equivalent. Um, while I was there, I was able to be the smallest scholarship starter in the country. Mm. Um, I graduated number one in my major, uh, sport and recreation management major. I got to talk about the degree. That's awesome. Um, Dean's list a couple times, academic all big E. So yeah. all the smart guy things we were able to accomplish. <laughs> um, so from there, getting into it professionally. Uh -huh. um, I started this profession back in 2006. So I've been okay. doing it however long that's been. Um, mm. I started off in this building as an intern. Mm -hmm. So I was working for uh, one of the first franchise chains dedicated to sports performance training, yeah. Velocity Sports Performance. So started there, did that for five years. Mm -hmm. um, from there, that company shut down. I started doing some things on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, and here we are today. So just yeah. to talk a little bit about how the company's grown, um, it just went from me doing it to now we're in two different cities. So we have right. a location here in Greensboro mm -hmm. as well as one in Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, we just did that roughly 16 months ago. Okay. Um, Another thing that we have going is pretty awesome, I think, is mm -hmm. we're speed consultants to the Campbell University football program. Yep, yep. So that's major just because you don't go into the private sector to get guys to work at the college level. Mm -hmm. So I think that just gives us a little bit more credibility to as how legit we've been. Yeah, and it's awesome to hear how it came to a full circle, as you said, you being an intern here, and now you and Will Bradley Sports Performance, you know, flourishing and doing great here in Greensboro, as well as Charlotte, North Carolina. So we'll definitely hit more on your, uh, your uh, performance and your uh, club. But uh, with that being said, as always here on the podcast, well, uh, go ahead and say a prayer. So let's do let's it. Let's go ahead and bow our heads. Uh, Father God, I want to give you all praise and glory, Lord. I want to thank you for what you give us. I want to thank you for the blessings you continue to provide us, Lord. I thank you and I cannot thank you more enough, Lord. I ask that, you know, throughout our times and tribulations, Lord, that we can use you as our cornerstone and we can use you as our firm foundation, Lord. I ask that those that may not know who you are, Lord, that those who may not know who you are as our Lord and Savior, that someone can go out, Lord. Someone can speak boldly about your name throughout their day-to-day -day activities or wherever they may be at, that they can speak boldly about your name. I get, as I continue to say, I ask that you uh, be careful. We can be careful with our words and our act actions through our day, Lord, and give all praise and glory to your name. In the Lord's name we pray. Amen. 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 And uh, here on the podcast, we always start off putting you, our special guest, in a, you know, a sticky situation and get the right. juices flowing. Okay. So first question for you, the hot take is, you know, you being across, getting athletes throughout the triad, throughout the state of North Carolina, I want to know where do you find the best athletes? Right. So I think an even better question is mm -hmm. which region yeah. takes training more serious, okay. right? So you're going to find great athletes all over the place. Right. Um, the way we always look at it, if you look at Guilford County, split it down the middle and go east, you got athletes there. You've got athletes in Winston. Yeah. Now that I've been able to do some things in Davidson County, you have athletes there. Yeah. Uh, you can go up to Rockingham, there's athletes there. There's definitely athletes in the Burlington area. Yeah. Yeah. So 
I mean, you got freaky athletes close to the North Carolina, South Carolina border in those rural areas. Mm -hmm. So you're going to find great athletes everywhere. I don't think it's a certain place has more athletes than other. I mm -hmm. think it's what comes down to is who takes training to serious. Yeah. And that's without a doubt the Charlotte area. Mm, gotcha. So, I mean, it's a big city. They're around it. There's a lot of professional teams there. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people, right? So mm -hmm. they understand that you have to do something a little bit more to give yourself an edge. Right. So to give you an example, um, like I said, we just set up a, diff a second location in the Charlotte area mm -hmm. last June. The majority of athletes that walk through that door are division one big time athletes right yeah. so a lot of other places you'll get athletes that are at that level mm -hmm. and they might not necessarily think they need to do training oh okay I there's see a little going. bit different it's right. no we're good but we got to continue to work yeah. to be where we want to be eventually yeah. So I would say the Charlotte area yeah. takes training a little bit more serious. You can find good athletes anywhere. Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, athletes across throughout the state of North Carolina and meant much more. And I like, I like what you were saying with Charlotte, how they, you know, you got to take the next initiative step of improving and going further than just being, you know, being satisfied, being complacent. Right. And with that, oh, we'll go on or we'll rewind a little bit and talk a little bit about you and your childhood. Uh, I guess I want to know first a little bit about yourself and what was your childhood like? Absolutely. So I was born in the Philadelphia area. Mm -hmm. My dad was in the Marine Corps, so we were a military family. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of moving around in my early years. Uh, went from Philadelphia to Yuma, Arizona, mm -hmm. Yuma, Arizona to Honolulu, Hawaii. Mm, wow. Honolulu, Hawaii to Jacksonville, North Carolina. We were on Camp Lejeune. Yeah. And then when I finished middle school, mm -hmm. uh, my dad had retired. My mom was in an inventory job and she got a job promotion and that brought us here to Greensboro. Mm. So. Yeah, that's my childhood yeah. for the most part. Yeah, man. And, just, and from there, I want to know what was your dream like? What was the dream career? What was the dream uh, profession for you? That was simple, man. Yeah. NFL or bus, man. Yeah. That was yeah. it, man. You know, you grow up seeing this stuff all the time. You're outside playing and emulating the guys that you look up to. And Absolutely. I want to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm mean, very cool. And then from there, you like you were saying uh, earlier, you went to Page High School. Uh, share with us some of the valuable lessons you uh, got from there. Absolutely. Um, the biggest lesson I learned from Page High School, mm. life isn't fair, right? Yeah. So I'm yeah. a smaller guy, mm -hmm. and we were pretty legit at Page when I was there, number two in the state. You had a, mm. a lot of really good guys on the team, and I think my size kept me from being in position to do some things that I knew I was capable of doing. Yeah. So you learn life isn't fair. And I mean, I learned that in middle school too, but you could say Paige added on to it. Yeah. Um, but to add on to that, life isn't fair, and to make up the gap, you have to work hard. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bar right there. You, you're exactly right with that. Yeah, you got to work hard and you got to earn what you want. Exactly Absolutely. right. And from there, clearly you went to uh, Temple University uh, as a walk-on. And then before you know it, you uh, got a full-time scholarship. Yes, so sh share with us why you chose Temple. And from there, how you were able to go from a walk-on to a full-time scholar. Absolutely. So I knew I was going to play big time Division One football. I didn't care size, height, mm -hmm. you know, the opportunities I was given at the high school level, it was going to happen. And right. if you could talk to some of the guys that I used to be around a lot during my high school days, they would mm -hmm. tell you the same thing. I would go hard in the weight room, yeah. put in extra work, any, anything. Yeah. So what I did is I, ha I knew I had to find a school that played small receivers. So, mm, good point. you know, I'm dating myself, but there wasn't, the internet was new, right, yeah. when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. So what we would do is you'd go to Walmart and you'd get one of those Athlon mm -hmm. preseason magazines. Oh, okay. So I would buy them okay. every year and I would go through every single Division I football program Did and look at the research. roster. Yeah. yeah, so I was looking at the schools that played smaller receivers. Mm -hmm. And Temple University was in a big conference and they played a lot of smaller receivers. Mm -hmm. So it just looked like it was a win-win. It was going to yeah. give me an opportunity to go back home to the Philadelphia area. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was. And, and a real fact, I only applied to one university, Temple University. Wow. So I went all in. Yeah. And um, that happened to, to work out in my favor. So from there, I had to go up to the school, talk to the coaches, beg them to let me try out. Mm -hmm. I went through the tryout process, not preferred walk on. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, like I always have been a, a good football player. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was able to catch attention my first week on campus. Yeah. So. Temple University, when I first got there, their defense was top 15 in the country. Um, and I was able to make a name for myself. I caught like a 55-yard bomb on the starting defense mm. in the scout team. Yeah. So that started to gain attention. And the way we used to do it at Temple University was after we would do scout practice, oh. uh, we would go ones versus twos in front of the whole team. 
So okay. everybody was okay. watching. Everybody's all eyes. Right? I knew I was on my path because I was the only walk on that they allowed to get in those scrimmages. And yeah. I was making plays there. So at that point, um, I traveled as a, as a red shirt freshman, walk mm -hmm. on, which doesn't happen that often. Yeah. And just worked and, and made a way for yeah. myself. And next thing you know, I'm on the field playing. That's phenomenal. And I, I'm sure you, a lot of people listening, watching, will get, you know, hear that of encouragement and, you know, feel like, feel motivated to do what you have done. And uh, from there, like you've already mentioned before, you being a, a rather smaller guy, how, what were some of your skills and assets that led you to still uh, show up and be, let your presence be known on the field? Absolutely. Um, so from a physical standpoint, mm -hmm. elite quickness. Um, yep. I think to play at the Division One level, you gotta ha something has to be special. You have to have something at least one. Yeah. I think the elites, the elites have multiple things that are good about them. Yeah. Uh, my quickness was elite, and I was fairly strong for my size. Yeah. So that's one thing that I was I would always hear. Guys would try to tackle me, and it's like, man, you're way stronger than what you think. Yeah. Um, I had to develop the speed aspect of it from a mental standpoint. I was always locked in. I worked hard. I knew all of my assignments. Mm -hmm. And I just think that, that I wasn't scared, I was fearless and willing to put my body in harm's way to get on the field. Yeah, absolutely. And then from there, I wanna know what, what part of your timeline did you get that transition from uh, college at Temple University to now here as a, you know, Will Bradley sports performance? How was that transition for you? Absolutely, so um, I transitioned here straight from college. Okay. So to backtrack, I had a really good fall camp my senior year, mm -hmm. like a really good fall camp. And it was to the point where the Washington Redskins, the Kansas City Chiefs, and the New York Jets, wow. right? They were coming out to practice and they were talking to me. Mm -hmm. And it was, that was at that time, it's, I wish I played in today's football, man. I was tailor-made to play football yeah. today. Yeah. Um, back during my time, it was a lot of bigger guys, Randy Moss, T.O., things okay. of that sort. Yeah. But those three teams saw me and I did well enough when they were there that it was like, kid, if you can have a pretty good season, mm -hmm. uh, you got a chance. Yeah. So I didn't have the season that, that I thought I was gonna have, but in my mind, yeah. you know, those conversations with those three teams was like, look, I'm going to try to play in the league. Yeah. So what happened was that's how I got with velocity, right? Mm -hmm. So I wanted a place to train for my NFL pro day, mm -hmm. but um, I also needed a place to complete my senior internship and velocity provided, you know, both, both. of those things yeah. for me. I didn't get in the NFL, right? Mm -hmm. But um, the people that I was training with, some of the trainers were like, I really needed to make a run at the arena league mm -hmm. or, or the CFL just because, you know, they seen me running routes, catching balls, doing one-on-ones, things yeah. of that sort. And he was like, you're a talented guy. So. I said, this is what I'm going to do. Velocity offered me a job. It was a natural fit. It was good for me. I had some good track coaches and trainers in high school and college. So okay. it was a natural transition to be able to work with the kids. I had a pretty good internship. Yeah. I got a job offer. Um, and it was, I'm only going to give this thing one year. Mm -hmm. um, I'll do this thing. I'll work here part time. Um, I'll train and I'm going to try to get in the CFL or the Arena League one shot. I said, you got to remember, I graduated number one in my major. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of jobs set up for me up in the Northeast, and that was going to be the move if it didn't work out within the first year. Yeah. One year turns into two, turns into five. I get on some, some minor league indoor teams, mm -hmm. and I work my way up to the top Arena League. Um, yeah. I spent a little bit of time with the San Jose Sabercats, mm -hmm. uh, got there in 2011. Yeah. So. That's really what kept me in this. I really mm -hmm. didn't have a plan. This wasn't something that I wanted to do. Yeah. When we came out, uh, being a trainer or a coach wasn't glorified. It was, mm -hmm. if you're that guy, that means you didn't make it. So there's, there's no way that I'm gonna be a trainer. Yeah. So there really wasn't any plan. Yeah. Um, I think my desire to try to play at the next level is what brought me into this field. Yeah, and it goes to show how important your academic success is. Absolutely. Because having that, you had a, you know, a efficient backup plan that is why you're here today, of course. And from there, I wanna know a little bit about yourself because you, obviously we just talked about academics but some of the certifications you also have absolutely yeah so I have my USA weightlifting mm -hmm. uh, level one yeah. um, I have my USA track and field level one yeah. and then I have ignite performance training 360 so that certification is pretty interesting okay so about 10 years ago um, Under Armour was really trying to get into the sports performance space mm -hmm. and they partnered with IMG Academy Mm. So they flew everyone that worked at Velocity Sports Performance mm. down to IMG Academy for this huge three-day certification where yeah. they took us through everything, all their protocols, things of that sort. <clears throat> so I think the main certification you want to get if you're in this field is the CSCS okay. or the Strength and Conditioning Specialist yeah. certification. Um, but that Ignite Performance was the closest thing you could get to that. So those are the three certs I have. Okay. Um, outside of that, um, I think if you want to move the ball forward, you got to be able to think outside the box. Yeah. So 
I'd be remiss to not sit up here and not and not really show love to one of my biggest mentors, a Darian Barr. Mm. Um, when I worked in this field early, um, I never used to leave this building before 11, 1130, just because I was trying to get my 40 faster, yeah. right? Yeah. So the velocity system was good, mm -hmm. but for somebody that was advanced like me, it wasn't taking me to the level that I wanted to be at or mm -hmm. that I needed to be at, yeah. and I felt like we weren't affecting athletes at the higher rate that I felt like we could, uh -huh. right? So um, I was able to meet some guys just outside of that whole um, structured box, if right, you want to, for, sure. for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. And he was able to just give me some outside thought on how to make this thing better. And those yep. two things combined allowed me to create the system we have today. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. That's amazing to see and hear. And from there, obviously, you've success has continued to grow. But now I want to back or not backtrack, but go off a course and talk a little bit about your saying uh, with Campbell University. I want to know a little bit about your experiences there and what you've learned right so that's been dope man yeah. um, I think like I said we have this system that we've been able to create from inside the box versus outside the box principles right yeah. and it allows us to get results quick I think that's what separates us from a lot of other places around here one I was an elite athlete mm -hmm. I have that you know background then you have the training and the scientific aspect Correct. yeah so I can come together from two different viewpoints mm -hmm. right um, when we got to Campbell University, I think really the biggest thing there is we knew we were legit, mm -hmm. but now you have all the technological metrics to be able to yeah. back that, right? Yeah. So when Coach Minner brought us in, um, his statement to me was, mm -hmm. look, man, we recruit speed already. I'm not looking for you to come in here and, and really make any miracles happen because we're mm -hmm. going to recruit speed. Mm -hmm. If you can get my team 5% faster, I'm happy. And when he said that, I looked at him and I sat back and laughed. And I was like, Coach, yeah. we're going to get you more than that. Um, so just being able to use the lasers and then they use those catapult, those GPS trackers to be right. able to track how fast guys are going. Uh, we're in year three now, right? Mm -hmm. So we're able to have metrics on guys. Just let's just talk about their top mile per hour, right? Yeah. We have guys that have gone up three, three and four miles per hour from year <laughs> one to year three. That's so incredible. I think, yeah, when you start having technology kind of show the results yeah. and backs what, what we already know. Without knew. a doubt. Um, and in the times as well. Yeah, that's, that's incredible, like I just said. And, you know, be able to have the confidence first to tell, you know, Coach Miller and the Fighting Campbells that, you know, hey, we could do much more than 5% is awesome. And that's, you know, like I said, I'm lost for words. And that was just awesome to hear. And from there, we talked about Campbell's. I wanted, and we talked about college. We'll talk a little bit about professionals now. Okay. And with that, uh, you're a big Phillies fan, baseball For sure. fan. H how far do you think they can go? Man, I think we can win it, man. Yeah. So yeah, we're up 3-2 in the NLCS right now. Mm -hmm. um, shoot, game six is the night. Hopefully we close it out. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to be a tough battle, yeah. you know, I'm speaking into existence when we get to the World Series, right? That's right, that's so right. So now you're seeing the most talented roster in baseball, the Texas Rangers, or you're looking at the team yeah. that beat the Phillies in the World Series last year, the Houston Astros. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough matchup either yeah. way, but, um, you know, I'm always going to have confidence in my guys. That's right, that's right. Winning's not easy. If it would, everybody would do it. You right? know it. You exactly. Know it. And from there, I want to know, uh, talk about football, NFL, what, what, what's your favorite team? I'm a Philadelphia guy. You're a Philly right? guy. I'm, I'm from okay. the Philly area, so I'm an okay. Eagles guy. All right, we, we're going to have to rub shoulders a little bit. I'm a Cowboys fan, so we, that's a little <laughs> – first time ever we got guests walking off of the pod. That's hilarious. But, no, but that's all that's, love. That's love for sure. But, oh, my goodness, the Phillies, well, they're doing great. It's hard to hate on them. Jalen Hurts is looking phenomenal. A.J. Brown. I'm a Cowboys fan, but I think y'all have it on lockdown in the division. But um, do you think – how far do you think they can go this season? Man, so in sports, Realistically man. speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In sports, man, it all yeah, comes yeah. down to to injuries, right? But, I yeah, mean, they have absolutely. one of the more talented rosters in the league. Uh, they beat a good Miami Dolphins team last night. Yeah. yeah um, I think they were missing a couple guys. They are missing Ramsey and, and, and Xavier. So right, they're missing right. a couple guys. The Eagles are missing a couple guys. But for the most part, those are yeah. two – high-end teams and they were able to win yeah. so I think when you win games like that um, I think it's realistic to say you can make another run it's just the NFL is just yeah. so unpredictable and it injuries is. can change everything yeah. so I'd say deep playoff runs yeah. just to be conservative yeah that's fair to say you know that script that NFL script is unpredictable Man, you, you, never know. Know. you never know you never know <laughs> you never, <laughs> you never know. know but I think I think we'll probably split the Cowboys and Eagles in the head-to-head -head two matches I think we'll split but it's just when it comes to playoff season for the Cowboys, it's just it gets a little shaky for us. Yeah, it's a little man. Shaky. Um, their time will come. Um, yeah. Shoot, when I was growing up, it yeah. used to be 
tough sledding. Yeah. Because yeah. I was growing, when I was growing up, the Cowboys were always winning, man. So, uh -huh. you know, I'm a Philly guy, but to say that I would grow up and not see the Cowboys being consistent or not being mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl yeah. is just wild because that's what I was used to seeing yeah. growing up. Yeah. I, w I wish I could say that in my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I could not, but hopefully... The Cowboys' success will continue and hopefully go much further than just a second round playoffs. But uh, with that being said, had a lot of fun with you on this podcast, but that leads to the big time question. Are you ready for that? I got no choice, right? That's right. Let's, let's do it. So big time question for you is what's the mission? What's your goals here with Will Bradley Sports Performance? All right. So the crazy thing is, like I said, we never really had a plan because it was this is just something I want to do while I chase football. Yeah. Um, but I think as this thing starts to grow and the bigger it grows, you got to really start going in and really putting in business principles, right? Mm -hmm. So what we truly want to do is, what we really want to do is just get good at what we have right now. So mm -hmm. we're in Greensboro, we, we've got that pretty solidified. Yeah. Now we want to really go in and make sure we can make the Charlotte location, you know, level up to what the Greensboro location looks like, if not be better than that. Yeah. Um, so I think we want to start there. Yeah. Um, if we can get good in those two locations, you start looking to go east yeah. um, in the Raleigh area. We have a lot of connections in the Raleigh area. We've got athletes that we work there. Mm -hmm. So I think at some point you want to be able to migrate that area. Yeah. Um, and then from there start, we're on the South Carolina border. We train a lot of South Carolina schools and athletes. Mm -hmm. So now start moving in towards that, green, that Greenville, Spartanburg, kind of that location. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the yeah. mission's always, we've got a, a nice team and we want to be able to take care of them. Yeah, yeah, just take care and that's a, for sure, that's definitely important. And from there, as always guys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the merchandise. Be sure to check out Will Bradley and his merchandise and what he does at, in here at Sports Performance. He definitely makes uh, dreams become reality. Absolutely. And uh, with that, I'm gonna give you the floor one more last time uh, to give the audience any last words of encouragement or advice. I think at the end of the day, I think everybody sees the things that I've been able to accomplish in my life, whether it's been going from walk on to scholarship starter at 5'5", 150, 155 pounds, depending on the day, yeah. or whether it's the business that we've built in a very, very tough field yeah. to build a business in just because this is something that everybody thinks that they can do. This is something that everybody wants to do because they, quite frankly, don't want to work, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think at the end of the day, to really make something something major happen, mm -hmm. it takes what it takes. Um, it mm -hmm. takes hard work, it takes yeah. sacrifice. What are you willing to give up to get yeah. there? Yeah. Um, that's really it. So if you want to find us on Instagram, at Will Bradley SP, Twitter, at yeah. Will Bradley SP. For my Facebook peeps, Will Bradley Sports Performance, we're there. Yeah. Um, website, www.willbradleysp.com. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Make sure to plug in, put your plug in there for sure. And as always, guys, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribe. With that being said, I would just say peace on three. Sounds good with you? Yes, sir. One, two, three. Peace. peace. All right, that was a good one. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you.